the implication of that kind of research is huge for this conference. The larger the number of witnesses, the less individuals in the crowd take personal responsibility, show personal compassion. It becomes somebody else's problem. Well, surely somebody called the paramedics. Well, certainly someone will bring water. In order to change the world, then, to be a real sign of change, we need to join with others whose very purpose is compassion. We must take the anonymity out of responsibility. It was Rotary International, for instance, that virtually wiped out polio through a worldwide immunization campaign. But groups of this nature are decreasing in number everywhere. What you don't do, not many others are doing. Don't take it for granted that they will. Due to higher rates of transience, mobility in this society, social statisticians are now telling us people simply aren't joining local groups because they don't expect to be there long enough to get involved. So membership declines, resources dwindle, and the negative impact of those losses affect the very character of the nation. The very structures of the world around us shift and we don't even notice it. Conventional wisdom holds too that individuals volunteer in greater numbers after they retire. I know how old you are, I'm looking at you. <laughs> the world is waiting for you, but there are no social statistics that support that assumption anymore, because so-called retirees must now either keep on working to survive themselves or too often find themselves distanced from the old networks that once linked them to the public arena. There's nobody at the office anymore running around with an envelope that says, will you give money to this family because their house just burned down? Volunteerism, once the province of women, now in a world of working women and mothers is greatly reduced as well. But with the loss of local involvement comes the desensitization that makes us spiritual recluses detached from the world around us, part of the very spiritual sterility and emotional unawareness of the plight of others that we ourselves decry. Point. It is up to people like us then to remember the compassion that saved us somewhere along the way, and then to stand up and pass that goodness on. One can never pay in gratitude, Anne Marlowe Lindbergh wrote, one can only pay in kind somewhere else in life. We don't give things to people because they need them. We give things to people because someone, somewhere, gave to us, and now it's our turn. Life, you see, is a game of pass it on. So it's up to us to make compassion part of the very fabric of our lives. The United Way campaign, the Food Bank Food Collections, Local Habitat for Humanity, Sierra Club, Local Congregation Soup Kitchen, NSP, they are our spiritual lifelines to the compassion that beats in our hearts, that inflames our humanity, that is attuned to the needs of the world and is crying out in us to be born singing a song of human souls that nevertheless must be released to be real. As the Hindu and Buddhist put it, if we are to become enlightened, we must see suffering, as Shoshu did, where it is, and turn our own lives around to stand by till the other one can stand alone. If we're to really follow the compassionate one, as Judaism and Christianity and Islam put it, we must, as Tetzingen did, identify with all humanity. We must develop the awareness it takes to dig down deep into our own pain, to feel the feelings of those who suffer now. And we must begin, love teaches us, to dethrone our own egos, American, white, chauvinistic, nationalistic, for the sake of the other, for the sake of the world. Compassion, Mason Cooley writes, brings us to a stop, and for a moment, we rise above ourselves. The Dalai Lama says we must learn to look at the other and say, just like me, this person is seeking happiness in life. The foundation of compassion rests on the scientific awareness that as human beings, we need one another to come to the fullness of our own humanity. Religions teach us that we need to be catalysts for kindness. We need to be a reservoir of understanding for the world. 
We need to be signs of the compassionate one, the Brahma, the Buddha, the Messiah, the Christ, the prophet, who we tell ourselves we follow. And we need to be it now while there is still a world for compassion to cultivate. So you see, our work this weekend and in our lives is nothing less than the attempt to create a common movement among Jews, Christians, Muslims, Buddhists, and Hindus to delegitimize the use of religion as a technique of either state or personal violence. We must show that the voice of negativity and violence so often associated with religion is the minority and that the voice of compassion is the majority. And so as religious people everywhere, we must raise a common voice of compassion. We must do what our own official leadership has far too often failed to do in both church and state because it is clear that what we've been doing, even in the name of religion, is not working anymore, cannot work in isolation, and will not work without a more cosmic vision of compassion. If we are ever to be what we know now we were obviously physically created to be, the doers of justice, the bringers of peace, the binders of a fractured world into one, it is the spirituality of compassion that is our claim to it. No doubt about it. Both body and soul demand that we become a movement to revive compassion, that we become what we say we desire life to be, that we change the, the world, this calculatingly cold, too often cruel commercial world. The Sufi tell the story of the Holy One who was distracted on his prayer rug by the crowds of broken and beaten and beggars who were souring his silence and crushing his contemplation, he said, under the weight of their pain. Good God, he groaned, if you are a good God, why don't you do something for such as these? And the voice came back from heaven saying, I did do something, I made you. The change has to start somewhere and read your newspaper it's obviously not going to start at the tops of this world. That leaves us. In the name of Brahman, Buddha, Yahweh, Jesus, and the prophet, for the sake of the children, the preparation of whom is our responsibility, for the sake of the world that now lies solely in our hands, for the sake of religion itself that must clearly be more religious still, let us then now, here, together, begin again knowing that if the people will lead, eventually the leaders will follow. Dear friends, lead. Thank you.